What's happened behind the scenes? I work at Fox. I, I do the games with a guy named Troy Aikman at Fox. And what you may not know is what Jerry, when he got into the club as the owners, uh, talking about the owners club, y you ended up saying with regard to the television deal, let's let Fox get in the door. Let's at least hear what they have to say instead of let's just go with where we've always been. Let's open this up and see what kind of money we can make. And, and the rest is, is literally history. Well, Joe, uh, the uh, number one thing that an NFL team depended on was their television income. And uh, these were lean times for the NFL relative to any time since or really before. And uh, the networks had asked the NFL teams to reduce the amount of dollars that they were paying them to show the games. That's much different now. And, uh, but they asked to re reduce it. And uh, there were very few owners that were willing to uh, not reduce it. They felt like they needed to know so that they knew where the dollar was going to be so that they could pay the players and uh, provide the stadiums and do everything to go with it. Uh, I, I didn't want to. Uh, the commitment that I'd made to buy the Cowboys, uh, I was not for reducing the amount of the television at the time. Fox had made an offer, the prior offering, and Mr. Murdoch basically said, you know, I'll be a player here. I'll come in this time, this round of bidding, but I do not want to be a stalking horse. I'm not going to be one that you just put me out there, get the price up, when in fact you're going to go with CBS. So I personally assured him, and of course uh, he did step in and make the offer, and the two CBS and NFL, who were absolutely tied at the hip in perception and visibility, no longer were there. CBS no longer did the game. This was a traumatic time, but it was also a very controversial time. And I had a lot of owners at that time, friends, or later to be friends of mine, I didn't know them well enough shake those fingers in my eyes and shake them up and said, you're nothing but a wildcatter. You can sit here and take these kind of risks. We, we don't want to do that. We can't do that. You're screwing this thing up, Jones. Did any of these blue blood owners eventually come around and say thanks? Yes, and to the man, really did, and say uh, thank you. Uh, so at the time, uh, we, uh, uh, you'd just come in. Uh, uh, we, uh, we were mad at you, but we're not mad at you anymore because the swing from that year of that year not taking a new deal to getting another deal was a quarter of a billion dollars, the difference in the price in one year's time. So it was a huge, significant change, but, uh, sea change for the NFL. But this is what you learn from the whole oil and gas business part of your life. You're willing to take a risk. There's a concept called tolerance for ambiguity. I love it. I've always loved the name, tolerance for ambiguity. Some people do not function at all if they don't know for sure they're going to get their check on Friday and it's Monday. They have to have it. They are not good. They are not good singers. They are not good. Uh, uh, whatever their skills are, they aren't good. Some people are brilliant when they don't know what their check is going to be. That's the Mississippi River boat gambler. They're at their very best. They're glib, they're charming, they're entertainment, and they tear their ass up. And they're the ones that don't know they're going to get the check. The tolerance for ambiguity, the tolerance for unknown that will bring out that gambler or that in you uh, is not for everybody. Some are just a barn with a, they can live with some risk and live with the unknown. And, uh, but by the way, the ones that will tell you that have had a lot of days when they've been sitting there with this phone and this one and been told your little ass just hit a dry hole and that side sinking. And this side over here, you're talking, got your voice upbeat, trying to talk old Joe into going in a new deal with you at the same time. <laughs> you just I'm in. That. Now I'm in. Just now, so you know, I'll put my money. The trick is, in. don't let that voice break somewhere in between <laughs> there. And so, when we can't turn back, and we step up there, and we know we're going to make those that we want proud of us, ashamed of us, or we know that we want to show them the ones that said we couldn't do it, then it adds a degree of passion, 
And that passion showed, and uh, uh, there really was no stopping it. This is where Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones are going to be dangerous. Together, these guys like coming to the Super Bowl. They want to continue this run.